Hi everyone, what is up? Steve here, and it's a beautiful day out in management of the enterprise land. Now I've been thinking to myself, and I thought it might be nice to create slightly different content for you that's a bit different from me just talking to PowerPoint slides. You can download the PowerPoint slides and read them anyway. You don't need me to be doing that. So I thought I'd just do some fun content type things, and this is the first one of those. Now, because it's the first one, we're going to be talking about what a business is. What is it that they do? Why are they there? What do they produce? It's fun. We're also going to be looking at a couple of different ownership structures, sole proprietorships and partnerships. It's not as simple as you might think. Let's have a look. Before we go any further, let's talk about what a business is. There are a few definitions, but we'll stick with a fairly simple one. A business is just an organisation that produces something. It produces either goods or services, and sometimes both. Now, so the big question is, what's a good and what's a service? OK, so a good is something that you can touch, something tangible, like a computer or a pair of glasses. And a service is something that's intangible, something you can't touch, like a haircut or the services of a lawyer, things like that. Goods, services, possibly both. Now, both goods and services rely on a chain, a supply chain of things being supplied to the organization that's providing them. And it could be just something as simple as, say, computers to do the accounting or whatever. But at the end of the day, there's always something that gets supplied to the business and the business might be in its own supply chain and supplying further on up the, the chain and we'll get to supply chains a bit later in the course. Basically, um, no business is an island. So here's an interesting thing. Businesses in general contribute to quality of life. You know, that thing that keeps you happy and um, brings you all of the nice things that you like and all of the different kinds of nice lifestyles and so on. So in a sense, in that sense, businesses are an essential part of, you know, the fabric of society. Just as an aside, governments do the same kind of thing. They can produce goods and most likely services that contribute to quality of life. So they're also a, an essential part of the fabric of society. Just so you know, because we all like to drive on roads, right? Well, most of us like to drive on roads and we all think that education, well, hopefully we all think that education is something that's worth investing in. Otherwise, you're probably wasting your time being here. That's a thing. So businesses, governments and people and so on all work together to make the places that we uh, find ourselves in better places. And that's a good thing. That's worth celebrating. It's actually the heart of the social contract, which we'll get to in a couple of weeks time. But it's worth remembering that society allows businesses to exist so that they can produce things which contribute to a better quality of life and that help society. It's a win-win situation for everybody. Businesses get to exist and make money. People get to be, for example, paid salaries or have nice things to buy and so on. And everybody feels say happy shall we so i think you get the picture the thing is that it's obviously not like i've just described with my rose tinted glasses on and all that kind of stuff and there are issues and problems associated with it but that's the general idea businesses produce goods and or services that contribute to our quality of life now that we've got that out of the way let's talk about who actually owns these businesses because the people who own the businesses generally speaking are the ones that make decisions about the direction that the businesses are going to go either directly or indirectly there are various different kinds of ownership and in this little short i'm going to talk about two of them the first is sole proprietorship and sole proprietorship is when one person is the business they're the person that owns the business that runs the business they may employ a couple of people and so on but they're the one that 
is the business. So according to Industry Canada, and I'll provide the link somewhere, the sole proprietorships and small businesses are the most numerous of all of the business in Canada, making up uh, around about three in every four companies when you get up to nine employees, nine or ten employees. So it's quite a lot of very, very small companies doing a lot of really interesting things, making up a whole bunch of the economy. As a matter of fact, just on a, um, a side note, it's also interesting to note that 80% or almost 80% of the things that the businesses in Canada do are services and only just over 20% are goods. So that tells you something about the kind of economy that Canada is. And it might be interesting for you perhaps to find a country that interests you and find out what their proportion of goods to services is because different countries, different proportions, different goals. And it also means in Canada that there's lots of hairdressers and lawyers, amongst other things, of course. Sole proprietorships, they're usually fairly small, like I said, and they have various different things associated with them. For starters, the owner is the business and they get to make all of the decisions and they get to have all of the rewards. But there are problems associated with it. The most important thing that you have to realize is something called unlimited liability. So if you're the sole proprietor of an organization, if anything happens, say they go under or somebody gets injured or whatever, you're liable for anything that the organization does. If the organization wants to borrow money, it's actually you that's borrowing money. And if you forget to pay it back or can't pay it back, then you're the one that stands to lose everything. You get all of the risks, but you get a whole bunch of rewards. Overall, though, for sole proprietorships, the risks are generally outweighed by the rewards. And there are various things you can put in place like loan insurance and life insurance and all of that kind of stuff to make sure that the liability that you've got whilst it's still there is managed in a slightly different way. It might be nice to get a bit bigger <clears throat> because one of the problems with a sole proprietorship is not only is the business yours and you are the business, it's your ideas. It's hard to share with other people because it's your stuff. So one of the things that makes sense is creating a partnership. And that's the next form of business ownership that we'll talk about. Partnerships, two or more people jointly owning and running a company. As a result, they have a much larger pool of potential ideas and directions that the organization can go in, which is great. However, the decision making in partnerships can be quite complex and it's sensible to put legal agreements in place as to how decisions are made, who gets to make them and how they're agreed upon and so forth. Partnerships are generally quite small, but they can be huge. For example, the big four accounting firms are all partnerships. Partnerships also have unlimited liability. But the thing about them is that if one partner does something that brings the business down or into disrepute or whatever, all of the partners are liable for what happens. So it pays to be very careful about which kind of partner you want to have in your um, in your partnership. There are some things like limited partnerships, which manage some of this liability thing and the decision making thing. But we won't get into that just now. What's more, all of the partners get to share the profits in some kind of a way. And it must be quite annoying, I should think, to have and a partner who doesn't do anything and yet at the end of the day gets to walk away with a whole bunch of money as a result of your hard work. I wouldn't be too happy with that, but that's kind of the thing that you have to look out for and maybe you can put agreements in place to manage. Those are the breaks. You get certain rewards, like the bigger pool of ideas, you get to share the profits and so on, but there are some risks. You still have unlimited liability. You have the potential for partners not to pull their weight. You have the potential for problems with shared decision making and so on. But again, probably the rewards outweigh the risks and you take the breaks. Speaking of breaks, we could probably do with one now. So in the next little short, we'll talk about a couple more ownership structures. And for now, let's leave it there. See you next time.